Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to convert a multi-line address, be it three lines, four lines, etc., into a single row address and where you can take a whole series of these and convert them to one row per address. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here's our scenario. Here I have a list of four addresses, each with three lines, the name, street, the town, state, and zip. And what I want to do is convert those into a list like this, where we have the name, address, city, state, zip, all in one line with one formula that I can write, copy it down, and it generate each line just like that. So here's our formula. We're going to use the text join function along with the offset and row function to accomplish this. So what does text join do? If we look at equals text join, it concatenates a list or range of text strings using a delimiter. So if I hit tab, you can see I get a delimiter, ignore if empty, and then what is the text? So here we have text join. Our delimiter is going to be a comma and a space. Ignore empties, I want to say true. And then our text, we're going to use the offset and rows function to accomplish this. So let's walk through the formula. I'm going to go ahead and delete the formula here. And we're going to just write it from scratch. So I'll say equals text join. My delimiter, you need to put it in double quotes, so double quotes, comma, space, double quotes. And then the next argument is ignore empty, I want to say true, comma. Then what is my text? Well, I'm going to use the offset function. Now, offset returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. Basically, what we do is we create an anchor point then we decide how many rows down do we want to move, how many cells over, and then how high and how wide is the range that we want to accomplish. So I'm going to tab the offset function. My reference is going to be cell A1. I'm going to lock that, comma, and then how many rows down do I want to go? Well, in parentheses, I'm going to put the row function minus one, close my parentheses, times, and I'm going to put four in because, as you can see, the first row of each address is four rows down. So we have row one, row five, row nine, row 13. And then I'll put a comma. How many columns over do I want to go? Zero. What's the height? The height of my range is three rows high, and what's the width is one. Close my parentheses for the offset function. Close my parentheses for the text join function. Hit enter, and I get the first list. And as I copy it down, it automatically will populate then the next one, the next one, the next one. So again, this is my formula. So you can see I took whatever row that that formula is in, minus one. So for the very first one, we're in row one, minus one. So that's zero times four would make that zero. So I would go zero rows down, zero rows over, a height of three and a width of one. If I move down to here, notice my row number would be row number 4 minus 1 would be 3 times 4 would be 12. And you can see starting at A1, if I went down 12 rows, it would take me to row 13 and that would be the beginning of that address. And again, I would start here, go down 12 rows to row 13 over 0 three high, one wide, and that would give me that list. And then the text join function would concatenate those rows into one row using the delimiter comma space, and that's how I get those like that. If we started down here, I would have a similar formula equals text join. My delimiter 
double quotes, comma, space, double quotes, ignore empties, true, comma, offset function. I'm going to still start with cell A1. I'm going to lock that F4, comma, my row. I do, I do have to put that in parentheses, though, the row function. And I'm going to subtract, I'm in row 8, so I'm going to subtract 8, close that parentheses, times 4, comma, how many columns over 0, how tall 3, how wide 1, close those two parentheses, hit enter, and again, I get the very first one, copy it down, and again, I get the rest of them just like that. So... Wherever you're starting your formula, you want to subtract that row number from the rows function in order for it to start properly listing the information for the text joint function. Now here I have addresses that are four rows high. So if we compare these two formulas, you'll see the difference is that here I multiply it times four here I multiply it times 5, and here we have it 3 rows high, and here we set the formula for 4 rows high. And other than that, the formulas would be the same. If you had a 5 row high address, you would have it multiply times 6 and have that 4 being a 5. So that's the only difference you would make if the number of rows you have is different than what I show in the first example of three rows high. And that's how you can do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so at my website, excel-bytes.com, or at any of the social networks noted below. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy Excelling.